we're going to start with a reminder of how to do kinematics with constant forces. This is really sort of the first month of mechanics. Let's just do it real quick in one board. So these problems were always the same. It's always some precarious situation. You're standing at the edge of a cliff like this. Maybe it's Dover, I don't know. We can make it a little pretty. And you throw a ball off the cliff, right? So here's the ball and you throw it, which in physics means you give it an initial velocity v naught. And the question is, what trajectory does the ball take? So you remember how to do these. You think about this mass, in this case the ball, and you do a free body diagram. And you say, OK, the only force on the ball once I release it is gravity pulling it down, mg. So then you apply Newton's second law in both the x direction and the y direction independently. So the sum of the forces in the y is the mass times the acceleration in the y. And the sum of the forces in the x is the mass times the acceleration in the x. And now you want to keep in mind that we are looking for x and y, but we're looking for those as a function of time. We're trying to solve this trajectory. What is y as a function of time? What is x as a function of time? So that means these accelerations are really derivatives of the functions x and y. So if x is the position, x is a function of time, dx dt is the velocity, and d2x dt2, the second derivative, is the acceleration. So I'm going to rewrite these um, on this side as m d2y dt2, and on this side as m d2x dt2. So it's the second derivative of those functions. And then the left is just the forces, right? So it's minus mg uh, for the y, and it's 0 for the x. There are no forces in the x once this thing starts taking off. So at this point, we should stop and celebrate, because we have derived the equations of motion, which I'll just write as EOM. So in a trajectory problem, often you're trying to get to the equations of motion. And usually, they're differential equations. So this is two. These are two differential equations. If you're afraid of differential equations, this is your first one. And this isn't so bad, because to solve it, all we got to do is integrate. Integrate those two equations. So here we go. Let's see. So I'm going to do a couple simplifications. We're going to cancel the masses here. We can also cancel them here, because we have a 0. And I'm going to put this on the other side. Right? So we integrate d2y dt2 with respect to time, and we get dy dt. And the integral of minus g with respect to time is minus gt. But then we need a constant of the integration, plus c1. We're looking for the y position, so we integrate again. The integral of dy dt with respect to time is just y, the thing we're looking for. The integral here is minus 1 half gt squared. Integral of c1 with respect to time is c1t. And we need another constant of the integration, c2. Okay. Now let's just integrate the x. So the integral of d2x dt2 is the velocity dx dt. The integral of 0 with respect to time is c3, because we don't want to run out of constants. And then x function is uh, or the derivative, or the integral of dx dt is x. This would be c3t plus c4. So there, you've solved your first differential equation, if you haven't taken that, that course yet. And we get an answer uh, that, that really does describe the motion. The next step would be to figure out what is c1, what is c2, what is c3, and what is c4. You get those from the initial conditions. We just thought about the forces when we got to here. We didn't think about where it started. Okay, So if we put this base of the cliff as the origin, then it started out at some y naught. Well, if we did all the math, y naught would end up being c2. It also started out with some initial velocity in the y. If we could break v naught into v naught y and v naught x. Okay. So if you did the math, c1 would be v naught y. Uh, c4 would be x naught. Right? We're not quite starting at the origin. We're starting a little bit over. And c3 would be v naught x. So if you took calculus-based physics, you went through this process to solve for the trajectory. 
if you took non-calculus based physics, you probably just memorized this answer. You were given this answer and you said, I, it sounds right to me and you memorized it. And maybe even kind of sounds familiar, y is equal to y naught plus v naught yt minus one ft squared. Hopefully that, that rings a familiar bell. Even if you took calculus-based physics, you may have just memorized these equations. I don't know, you never know. But I wanted to take you through it so you could see the general strategy to solving a kinematics problem and to solving almost all physics problems. You have some physical situation, you apply the laws of physics, you get some differential equation that gives you sort of, that, that always describes the situation, you solve that differential equation, and then you get your real specific answer by plugging in for the initial conditions. That's how it works. So now to test it, let's make sure it worked. So this, if you plot this, it makes a parabola. So I will throw my chalk here and we'll see. Sure enough, it made a parabola. So this general strategy will now apply to simple harmonic motion.